with somebody who's experienced and you know it, it doesn't really it wouldn't really bring lure me into the distro and be like make me think oh yeah I should, I should download it's just like news section and some other stuff and it just it doesn't really say much it doesn't really make me think oh yeah I should download Mandriva 2011 yeah and I think one guy I remember how one guy I talked to who I talked to on IC every now and again he once basically told me how he like knew about Mandriva but it, ne- it he never really got drawn in he never really used it because it just still seemed too commercial. It <laughs> I, I think their goal now, and, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, I think their goal now is to take the existing customers of Andreva as it used to be at Andreva. I and think that's... Trying to carry and trying to carry on making the revenue and making something out of it and supporting the yeah, customers. Yeah, I think, I think that's the idea as well. Just so, and these are, their... they, oh, many of them are paying customers. And, and, and many of them already use KDE, which is, uh, I assume, which is why they've actually officially, the, officially the, the new Mandriva company, so Rosa Labs or whatever, they don't actually support, uh, and they explain it in the development, the, in the release notes from Mandriva 2011, why this is, but they've actually, they only support KD officially now. Anything else, so GNOME or XFCE or XDE or yeah. anything like that, that's the community that will provide well, I think that. Traditionally, it was, um, it was mostly KD oriented, and I think that, look at it, again, that's just more of a theory. I think, I think GNOME became extremely popular partly because of Ubuntu, and, and Ubuntu, uh, yeah, that's uh, Mark Shuttleworth, he was quite yeah, popular exactly. in choosing I, GNOME, he just chose hmm. it because it just, maybe, maybe because they've been used as default. No, I was thinking Basically, about. I was thinking about Gloom 2 earlier, how Gloom 2 did get pretty popular, but why did it get so popular? Because, it, well, it's because Ubuntu was providing yeah. it as if its If you look it, at the polls it, before, before. yeah, I mean, I look at the polls, uh, either of usage or things like popularity, or uh, you have to remember KV was a probably slightly heavier than... On the some, subject... Yeah, but on the on the subject of polls, I think it's kind of a good time Well, I think to, we'll, come to, uh, we'll come to it later, I think... Uh, because uh, one of the things I wanted to cover first, man, I think, uh, before we leap on to the uh, polls, uh, we probably, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I was going to say something about GNOME 3 and GNOME 2. Cause I know yeah, I was going to talk about, I wanted to talk about that personally as well. Fairly, you know, I use GNOME sometimes, but I, I mostly use it when I use uh, like a lab computer, like using somebody else's uh, uh, lab to do some experiments. GNOME, GNOME 2, I, um, I... I, yeah, I mean, I, that was my main desk, that, that's what well, it still is, really. It's my main desktop on my mood since, uh, 2004, when I started using Fedora Core 2, and I installed it on an old computer with one, 128 megabyte RAM and an old family computer, and, uh, it was like full CDs, and I took like four hours to install, and I couldn't use it online because I didn't have a, I wasn't hardwired in my, in my bedroom at the time, and, uh, the wireless device, so I didn't have to get that working. So, but anyway, I used say so, uh, Fedora Core two, and then reinstall for Fedora Core four when Grub me- messed up. And uh, I am, um, yeah. And I just like I remember using Fedora, and it was just oh, it, yes, it was offline, but it just yeah. everything looked so good. I was good. Using, say two thousand and four. Yeah, yeah. I was using Fedora. Yeah, that was really the new uh, the new Red Hat. Cause I was yeah, yeah. It, it, just, it just looked going, going from Windows XP. It just it just looked so. Oh wow! Well, trying to think what the Windows. wallpaper looked like. Do you remember the wallpaper? I I was using Core Two. Well. I think it was blue, and then they had red red, red hat logo as the like. Right. Um, yeah, that, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. It, just, was, it just looked really nice, and it was open office, yeah. and it was uh, for dry extras and all kinds of stuff. Now they're just for the since. I uh, I. Uh, I had to pick my own distribution back in 2004. I mean, I sort of knew about Linux. I saw a guy who I went to school with who's actually going to be listening to this. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> like, at least he'll listen to this because I'll tell him to listen to it. But anyway, um, he he got me into he got me into like stuff like Mozilla and CYG Win and do you know CYG Win? Did you ever use that? Uh, I used it briefly in which year? I think around 2000. Yeah. What did I use it for? It was just, I think I was experimenting with it. Rather yeah, it was like... Than, uh, I preferred just using Linux. I didn't see the point just trying to emulate. But I, I think yeah, it was exactly experimenting it. because some people were insisting on using Windows and trying to access But I, I prefer to just do the proper SSH to a uh, remote machines and stuff. And I didn't see the point just emulating a Linux environment or Unix environment locally. 
Uh, on the was pretty back in the days it was yeah yeah you could like run Linux off then <laughs> on Windows and you had like a, a Linux it's still around it's still being made. yeah yeah I was just gonna say because I saw it when I saw it very recently I can't remember where I saw a person using it somewhere sometime and you, physically and, and I, I was just surprised and I just thought I think I said to the person something I, I I think I implied like you should just install a dual boot system instead of just doing that. But, and you get um yeah you get a shell and then you get, and then you can like Linux you know, type shell and then you can run um links and stuff like that to kind of yeah. run apps and it's, it was quite interesting I mean, I, I mean I haven't used it for a long time but I remember it being really interesting I, I thought it was at the time when I was using it and then he had like Dev C plus plus installed but I never really got into programming I, I mean I. I used to take programming books out from college and UK college. Yeah. Which and you, you, you probably have to see, take yeah. code and work around code and not just read books about it. Yeah, exactly. Well, some, some people try to sell you the books. Uh, but if I... Okay, that's just going off topic, I know. But, uh, uh, well, I, I, I generally, as a kid, I, I would mess around with code. I would look around the manual pages. I wouldn't be a big fan of books because I, I say, well, the, the way... The, the ultimate goal is for you to be able to program and to work with code. Yeah. It's basically what you do, flip, flip pages around. That's the skill you'll have, flipping pages around, memorizing things. But you will not get practical examples looking at code. I mean, these days, like this week, I'm, I'm looking at loads of C++ code and hacking around it and just fixing a few things in it. Uh, and, and, and by, it's, it's not just the things that I actually do, it's some of the things that I see or I read. Uh, so I'm seeing how other people wrote the code, like recursions and things. And, and, and the fact that I have to understand these things and to read them and to learn somebody else's, uh, um, their their implementation, which I'm trying to I'm trying to merge two things. I have to understand what they did, and by doing so, I'm then kind of inheriting the knowledge yeah. uh, based on the examples. So I don't have to look at examples like hello world examples. I'm actually seeing examples of real code that I, I know what it's doing. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with that because, so I mean, I, I I've, I've learned HTML. I can do I can code HTML. I can code um, CSS when I need. To. I can code HTML. Okay, these are markup languages, not. Programming. Yeah, I was going to say they're much easier to learn than programming, but um, I can do that. I, I like to, I've uh, hand coded a few sites. Spent all that time sitting there coding these uh, sites in the markup language and making sure it validated <laughs> on W3C uh, on the uh, W3 and but. Programming, I, I, I mean, I yeah, I used to take these books out from the UK college, which is for the listeners in the United States. The college is isn't really the same thing over here in the UK as it is over there in the US. But uh, for example, but um, I used to take these like books out on like Perl and at C and. C++ and stuff like that and I would like read it on the bus back and or at home a bit and I I never really got into that and I always thought like okay but if I'm going to be programming what, what am I actually going to program? I think this is sort of what you well, were saying. One you other thing, to, I have several things to say about that. Well, one thing is uh, I think it's becoming a bit more cool to be uh, the person reading the programming uh, books. I, I think the general impression has changed. I think uh, uh, geeks in general are getting a bit of a better reputation in society. And I, I saw a very, very hilarious video of a guy that I've been a big fan of in, in YouTube for a while. He's, he's making this really fairly, uh, sometimes rude uh, YouTube videos and making observations. Uh, and basically he created this forum and he hired a geek to do that for him. Now, the story, just put the story short, he was trying to kind of police this guy around because he kind of owned the site. But the geek whom he hired had a lot more technical skills, and eventually got him kicked out of his own website. He basically, the administrator took took over the website that he uh, was paid to basically build, uh, and basically gave him a lesson in you know don't mess with the geeks because because you know they they are the ones who will even for the so-called cool guys they will be the ones in control because they know how to control the CMS and the other ones who know how to like recover passwords and stuff or yeah. the domain and stuff. So you don't 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 make them angry because they they will. They they will basically kick your ass online if if, if they want to. Uh, but one of the things that I was going to say though is uh, these days uh, studying HTML and uh, CSS and things like that. I mean, loads of these things, especially with free software, you can uh, uh, reuse a lot of stuff. And the way you would reuse things is in the form of uh, plugins and templates and plugging things together. And sometimes actually knowing what you're looking for is what defines the uh, characteristic of a good uh, uh, web developer. I mean, I, I I personally do some of those projects myself, and uh, and I I just know that I don't have to code pages uh, from scratch as as I, as I used to uh, 
uh, write them to JavaScript and everything. Yeah, you can you can look at other people's code. That's what they suggest yeah. when you learn to code a website. They so say, so they that's say one of the skills is being able to know what to look for and how to look for it and how, yeah, to, exactly. how, how to integrate things, especially how to integrate things together and make sure they work okay.